The sounds of nature. It's been a little while since we've been back out here on Call of the Wild, and honestly, it's because I've been super tired. Over the last week, I've driven over 40 hours. I've hunted five days and slept maybe 25 hours during that time because my brother has nightmares and it keeps me up all night long, so I really didn't get a ton of sleep. But during that time, we made a video and it turned out pretty awesome, but a lot of you guys had some questions about the hunt, and today, I'm gonna tell you pretty much exactly what happened. So first off, probably the most controversial topic of this video, and that is going to be the white-tailed deer that I jumped up. He was not actually 500 yards when I jumped him up. However, that's how far he was when I got a shot. For instance, like this right here, he was behind some brush, and he was probably like 350 yards away running. But I couldn't shoot until he cut out to the open. And once he got to this opening right here, then I was able to take a shot. Now, 500 yards out west is not super far, especially if you shoot that far all the time. I don't shoot that far all the time, so it's not ideal to take that far of a shot, but it's definitely a doable shot. However, I just didn't get lucky enough to quite connect exactly where I wanted to. So that's basically what happened. Uh, a big whitetail buck, and he was probably 11 points, you know, like a big 5x5 five five or a 5x6. I couldn't tell exactly how big it was. All I knew was that he was definitely a head mount buck. And he's running out there 500 yards. Now, you gotta imagine, when you're out west, this is all wide open here. There's like no trees, just a couple of brush uh, patches. And other than that, that's it. You got bluffs, you got canyons, and then you got wide open prairie. So when you jump him up, you're talking, I mean, you can still see him running like a mile away. So 500 yards really isn't that far when you're out west. Now the first shot I took hit right behind him and a little bit low. So the second shot I held higher and farther forward and took another shot and I saw that it was definitely a hit. So that's a good thing. I went down there and started tracking blood. We were looking for at least like an hour, hour and 15 minutes and all of a sudden the blood disappeared. And I'll tell you what, we actually drove around in a circle um, trying to find like where he went after that and we could not find him anywhere. So what I'm saying, we looked hard. We looked really, really hard for that deer. There's no way I'm gonna just give up on a giant head mount buck like that. Like I was out there until we couldn't find any more blood and that was it. You know, and when you're in the wide open like that, you can see for miles all the way around you and you can see he's not there. If he's not in the brush, then he's not there. So I don't know where he went, but all I know is we couldn't find him. Now that was basically the only shooter that we really saw up until that point, because prior to that, we did see a shooter, a giant muley in fact, a 28 inside muley, but he was bedded at 700 yards and it was before season. So we could not take that shot. Now it's coming down to the last day. We've been hunting all day long. We've only been seeing a bunch of does and small muley bucks. Well, all of a sudden we spotted a really good one. He's quite a ways out there. In fact, he's about 250 yards out, but he's bedded in this brush row right there. So now what we have to do is wait for him to get up and follow these does. Eventually he should. And when he does that, we should be able to get in position to take a shot. Honestly, at this point here, this was probably the most nerve wracking of the entire hunt because I know it's the last day and we're literally within 300 yards of this buck here. And all we have to do is get there undetected because if we make one wrong move, we can send that whole herd the opposite direction. So we're just taking our time and easing our way over the top of this ridge here. We know he's right down there. There's no reason for him to leave. We have a perfect win right directly in our face. And we know he's bedded right down there. So basically I got up as high as I could and I kind of sat down right on my butt. And I rested my AR-308 right on my knee. And I tried to hold for a perfect steady shot. And there he is right there. He's 212 yards out, about to walk right out into this opening here. Just taking his time, so we're gonna take our time, be patient, and get a really, really good rest. Hold it perfectly right on that front shoulder, and we definitely drilled him. Now at this point, you can't really see where the buck's gonna go, okay? Because he ran over the hill, and we kinda lost sight of him at that point. Now, we're using a 6.5, which is going to be kind of similar to a 308, which is what I used in real life. A 308 is nowhere near a 300 Magnum or a 7 mm. So, unless you hit him in the front shoulder, the spine, or the neck, you're really not going to drop that deer. 
All right, so at this point, this is basically when I turned the GoPro on. Well, this is when the GoPro actually was working, I should say. And from this point on, this is what you're able to see. But honestly, had the GoPro, uh, well, let's just say this. Had I dropped that buck with that first shot, then you wouldn't have seen any footage at all. It would have just been like, you know, kind of me um, shooting like at nothing because you won't really see what I was shooting at because the camera was only facing me, but I didn't have my GoPro working that was facing, you know, the deer. So had I dropped him, there would have been no video of anything. <laughs> right about here is where that muley was standing. Now, I saw him run up over this next hill here. So basically what happened is I went over to the last place that I saw that buck, which is right about there. And once I got in that position, I looked over right to my left and I could see a rack sticking up out of the grass 50 yards away. And that is when I saw him laying there. So at this point I saw the buck. Actually, this is kind of perfect because this is the grass that he was in. I could see his rack sticking up, you know, maybe 50, 60 yards away. And I knew he was definitely going down. He was about to expire soon. Here's the thing. If you hunt and you hunt an animal and it only runs 100 yards or 150 yards and beds down, you already know like that's a it's a good shot and he's about to expire, right? But also, you know that if you hunt, for instance, if you bow hunt and you double along a deer, you don't actually go after him right away. You want to wait, you know, at least like 30 minutes before you get down and track him down because you don't want to jump him up. So if you track them right away, you jump him up, then they're going to be gone. Well, in this case, we're rifle hunting. So obviously I saw him sitting there and I thought, well, I might as well shoot him again. And um, yeah, so I shot him again to get him to expire faster. And that's pretty much what happened. But I mean, had I not shot him, if I would have waited another 15, 20 minutes, we would have went over there and he would have been laying right there. Basically, there was three or four different hits all right in the lungs of that buck. So, I mean, these mule deer are tough and that thing wasn't going anywhere. He's about 50 yards in front of us, right in front of us here. We know it was a good shot, but at the same time, we definitely want to finish him off. He's definitely down well, now. He ran. And here he lays right here, a really nice looking muley buck. Honestly, this buck here quite reminds me of the buck that I shot. He does have stickers on one side, which my buck didn't, but Overall, that's a pretty cool looking, very symmetrical buck. And let's take a look at him. So we ended up getting a left lung liver and a stomach shot. And that buck still ran 50 yards, but my buck ran about 100 yards. And the thing is, I didn't catch liver. What I hit was just straight double lung. Honestly, I'll show you. Well, I don't know if I can show you or not. I'll try and show you basically exactly where I hit two different times on this buck. And that's basically it right here. Now, I wasn't exactly trying to hit right behind the front shoulder. I was holding it right on the front shoulder. But as you know, they can easily take a step. And when they do that, you're going to hit a little bit further back than what you would like. But still, I mean, honestly, it was a perfect shot and a beautiful buck, a 238.10. Really cool looking rack on him. Let's take a look at how wide he was. That was actually a 28 inch wide muley buck, which that's honestly like a perfect buck. This buck here reminds me kind of almost like the same exact buck that I saw the day before opening season when we were out scouting and I saw a 28 inch buck and I was like, I really want that buck. Well, I never saw him again, but anyways, I want to show you something that happened yesterday when I was trying to make this video. And uh, <laughs> let's just say my shot placement was a little bit too precise. Um, it was pretty funny though, because Honestly, the reason I chose the 6.5 is, is because it doesn't have a ton of knockdown power and it can definitely replicate, um, I guess, like what a 3 weight would do for a mule deer hunt if you don't hit them like double lung shoulder blade or double lung spine or neck shot. And uh, <laughs> you just got to see it because it's pretty funny and actually it's kind of awesome. Well, after about five minutes of trying to loop around this big old buck, we finally got in position here. He's 250 yards away. Now, all we got to do is wait for him to step out and give us a shot. Okay, so at this point, I'm sitting on my butt and I'm actually resting my AR-308 on my knee. So I'm trying to get a super rock steady rest to be able to take this shot. Because once it happens, we got to make it happen. And we're only going to get one shot at this. Not only that, it's the last day of the hunt. So we've been waiting about five minutes here. And what happened is the buck actually slid over a little bit more. So now we have a decent broadside shot. And all we have to do is wait till that doe shifts over a little bit more and we'll be able to have a nice vital shot. The angle that he's at is pretty broadside. So if we get good penetration, we should definitely be able to get a double lung shot. 
All right, so there's our buck right there. We're looking at about 260 yards. And at this point here, I'm just shaking like crazy, trying to calm down and be able to rest as steady as I possibly can to be able to make one perfect shot. All right, I catch my breath. All right, so we made a really good shot. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over there where I last saw him go over this hill. I saw him running this way and the last time I saw him was like right there. So at this point, this is when I showed you guys the GoPro footage because we went over there and I looked over the next hill a hundred yards away and there he was right there bedded. But he wasn't just bedded. He was about to, he was about to expire. That's what I'm saying. Um, he only ran 120 yards maybe and out west 120 yards is nothing so if a big buck is going to bed down within 150 yards after one shot he's definitely going down so it's just a matter of you know when he's going to go down and at that point we went over there and we found ourselves our first ever big muley buck and here he is right here let's have a look he's gonna score yeah that's what i thought so <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we made a double lung heart shot at 266 yards. I wasn't actually trying to make a double lung heart shot, but apparently we had a little bit of drop because I was honestly holding for right here. And we had about a three inch drop for 160 to 266. But anyways, the point is that's exactly what happened, except for we didn't hit the heart and he ran, you know, a hundred yards and piled up right there. But a beautiful buck though, look at that buck. I mean, obviously this buck is way bigger than the buck that I got. In fact, let's actually take a look at the tip to tip spread on that, a 34 inch spread. Yeah, that is giant. The first day I did see like a 28 spread on one of them. So he was a monster, but there's no way I saw any 30 inchers. And yeah, now you guys know exactly what happened on my first ever mule deer hunt that's so funny i literally used the 6.5 just so we wouldn't have as much knockdown power as say like the m1 <laughs> and we still dropped him <laughs> but anyways it worked out awesome we ended up getting a really cool buck out of it and it was just an amazing journey at that but that's gonna be it hope you guys enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time